You'll see. Vark Community Bank. Vark? Isn't even FDIC insured. In billions, when Vark Community Bank stood in the way of Axelrod's plan, it took one undercover video to bring it down. In real life, it took a weekend for Silicon Valley Bank and then Credit Suisse to disappear. In this video, we're going to explore how hard it is really to crash a bank. Oh, whoa, whoa, what am I paying you all to sit around and make like George Blander with your fingers all day? So let's first see how Axe Capital did it. We got something. They film undercover, pretend they want a mortgage, and the gay immigrants were so in love. Get a much worse rate than the average white male. Okay, Mr. Martin, looks like we can lock you in at 2.8. So close to prime, we're not even making anything on it. And that is the trigger. Xenophobia, homophobia, racism. Here, it's leaking the story to a journalist that manages to bring the bank down. You can serve them up all three or slice it any way you want. We cut everything on camera. We've also explored this in a previous video. So when I first saw the episode, I thought it was unrealistic because the last time I'd seen banks collapsing was during the great financial crisis about 15 years ago. Lehman, Bear Stearns, and the rest, they all had bad loans. Can't wait to settle down. Vark Community Bank did not have bad loans, neither did Silicon Valley Bank. We're hoping you can help us with a home loan. To understand what's happening, I spoke with Dan Davis, an expert on banking crisis, and the way I see how to crash a bank has changed radically. Well, it feels like a bit of a banking crisis, doesn't it? Because Silicon Valley Bank went last week, and Signature Bank of New York went in the same weekend as Silicon Valley Bank. And now this week, Credit Suisse is gone. And it looks like the only connection that Credit Suisse had to Silicon Valley Bank was that it had jumpy depositors. So ultimately, jumpy depositors create bank runs. If customers start pulling their deposit, the bank will need more capital. And if depositors know the bank does not have enough capital, they will queue to pull their deposits. It doesn't matter why people started pulling deposits in the first place. The thing that really is weird this time around, I think it's exactly what you've identified, is that we've not got any bad assets. Silicon Valley Bank looks like it's going to be the best bank ever to go into insolvency. It went bankrupt on US government bonds and agency mortgage bonds. Um, Credit Suisse could have opened its doors today and started doing business today. It might not have been in the greatest shape to do so, but it had borrowed 50 billion Swiss francs from the Swiss National Bank at the end of last week, which would certainly have allowed it to open its doors. So the recent episodes look more like a Varg Community Bank situation than to a Lehman situation. Zero. There is a 0% chance that your subprime losses will stop at 5%. It's just people panic. It's a pure example of a bank panic. People are just panicking because they worry that other people will panic. Of course, both Credit Suisse and SVB in this case have been done. Credit Suisse has been accumulating mistakes for years and SVB failed at the most basic banking skills of matching assets and liabilities. But they could have survived Longer. Bark is a shining jewel in the Banking Development District program. So the question remains, how hard is it to destroy a bank? I think people might have underestimated how fast things can happen these days, because you can just get, as we saw in Silicon Valley Bank, suddenly all of the depositor base turn out to be connected. You might have thought you had 4,000 depositors, but in fact, those 4,000 depositors are all of them influenced by a couple of dozen venture capitalists. And those couple of dozen venture capitalists are all members of two or three WhatsApp groups. So whereas you thought you were diversified in a crisis, suddenly it turns out that you have a liability side that behaves more as if you have two or three massive depositors. It's pretty clear that in the case of SVB, the nature of its depositors, all startups, made it easy to act all at once. But what about Credit Suisse? The other thing to remember about Credit Suisse is that this is an action of the regulators. And there was decent evidence that it had liquidity to meet deposit withdrawals 
for quite some while. But what happened is that over the weekend, the SNB, presumably after having talked to its fellow international central banks and to other regulators, just made the decision, we aren't going to let this go on anymore. Because one of the things that you have to do as a central banker managing a situation like this, you know that the earlier you act, the less you're going to have to do. If you're worried that a crisis is developing, you go hard and you go early. And in this case, going hard and going early seems to have involved arranging a forced merger, forced acquisition of Credit Suisse by UBS. So although Credit Suisse and SVB had similar endings, they followed a very different path. SVB saw a classic bank run. The authorities stepped in to take over. At Credit Suisse, the regulator stepped in before there was a bank run. And then they sold the pieces for cheap to Credit Suisse's biggest rival, UBS. Why? Because it was safer to do so than to let the situation evolve. So I think, yes, bank runs, like what happens to Vargbank and Billions, can happen. Good work, Victor. It was a major victory for Axel Rob, a hedge fund guy. However, what we witnessed shows that the power is now no longer in the hands of guys like Axel Rod and more in the hands of people like Chuck, the regulators, the law, who can sweep in and save or sell the bank if they think there's a risk. So it's fiction meets reality, but the script is turned upside down. If you're interested in going deeper into this, you can check my podcast conversation with Dan Davis, especially in banking crisis. And I've also done a video which analyzes the banking regulation. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to show your support and put thumbs up and add comments if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions on what video to do next. Thank you.